Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I just want to talk a little bit about the trading targets this week, uh, what a lot of guys are talking about, the fact that we've got four trades and what you've got to be careful of. So obviously, we've been given two extra ones for the season, which is great. That's going to help cover a bunch of the injuries, but still, it's not going to change the fact that a lot of teams are going to struggle to get a gun final 17 or 18 uh, without, you know, if they're, if they're burning trades. So I see a lot of people this this week bringing in guys that, you know, they're still bringing in the mid-ranger that might make a little bit of money, but it's not going to be a keeper. So it's just going to be wasting a trade from there. So let's just let's just have a look at a, at a bunch of these guys. So Hudson Young's one of them. And out of all of them, he's probably going to be the best one to bring in, but he's still going to have to trade him out because of the fact that John Bateman's going to be coming back. Like, yeah, he might score 45 to 50 a week. Yeah, he got 90, last, 90 minutes last week for 53, but, you know... He might score well and gain a bit of money, but even like at 465, he might gain 100K, but the talks are that Bateman's going to be back in a month. Let's just say it's four to five weeks. Even if he makes a bunch of money in that time, he's still going to have to trade him out. So unless bringing in Young helps you get a gun, you know, if you're trading two mid-rangers for Hudson Young and a gun, I'd suggest that you'd want to stay away from him. Um, and, that, and that goes the, the same for a guy like um, Butcher who is 50k more expensive, he is going to score well, 100%. For these next couple of weeks, he's going to score great. He's a point-per-minute guy. But you've got Isaac Liu, who is currently injured. He should only be out for, let's just say, two to three weeks, max. It says it says he should be back round, uh, in round nine, so next round on casualty ward, but let's just give it an extra week. And you know, with his higher break even, he's already lost a bunch of money this week because he hasn't played. He hasn't started at all. He's only going to keep... Uh, sorry, he has to score really well. I think he break in 53. So if he hits, uh, hits that break even, he's not going to change any um, his price at all. And the fact that um, he's only going to play in the 13 for, for two weeks, he's also just not worth it. Uh, only one I'd be tempted by in the mid-range, who I think is a, is a keeper, is, is Matt Mataudia, um at 560. But again, he's, his price is right up there too. <coughs> But if you're going to have him as a as a keeper in the center, then I'd definitely say go for it because he he should he should average forty. He should get forty plus. That's the key with him. If he does that, sweet. But as we've always said, there's a chance he goes to the centers. But if, even with him playing fifty nine minutes, he should get over forty. Like he he was killing it on the weekend. He was scoring very very fast before he went off the, his first stint. Um, so he's my only real thought in the centers at that sort of mid range price. But really, your goal this week should be to be should be to be bringing in some of the guns. So, you know, your McInnes's and, and the Cooks um, in the hooker, or even Smithy, he's gonna really going to have to carry with no um, with no Munster for the next month, these kind of guys. And then you're talking, yeah, the fullbacks, you got Tedesco, Taumalolo in the second row, Madison, these kind of guys are going to be the the ones you want to be picking up. And if you need a bit of a cut price, you've got guys like Toe Harris. If you're looking in the halves, you've got Cherry Evans being your peak with Cleary, these kind of guys. And then... Blokes like Pierce and Flanagan, who are a bit cheaper, so they're the kind of guys you want to be getting into your team as quickly as possible. Even J Chops is a little bit unders at you know, averaging fifty three with his seven twenty price tag. These are the kind of guys you want to be bringing into your team and focusing on that. So I'm seeing guys that you know. So these are my trades currently. You have got Horsbridge, Fodawake, and Munster to Pierce. Unfortunately, both injured, so I'm replacing them with two two keepers in their position, which is I think the only way to go about it. There's no point me removing, you know, having two keepers and then only finishing the trades with one. I feel like it's it's just going backwards where you want two potential keepers. Yeah, Pierce, you know, if one of these guys get injured again, that's just how it is. But Pierce is a keeper if he plays to his normal capabilities and Fodawake is on the way up, still gaining price. He should finish, he should round out about 800K and average 55 for the season. That's, that's my thoughts. So I'm seeing a lot of people bringing in like, I don't even, still don't even know how to say his name, New. Um, you know, bringing him in, he's super cheap, which is great. And looks like he should play fullback going forward, and he's in the centre position. It'd be nice if he, well, he, sh he should um, he should get his uh, wing fullback dual position as well later. So he's okay to bring in. I'm not against that. But he probably, if you're bringing him in now, you're gonna have, he's not going to make you shitloads of money, and you're going to have to keep him for the rest of the season. So just bear that in mind with him. Um, Fanatizi. Uh, yeah, he's just going to be a cash out. 
who might score okay for you. But he's not something you're going to start in your team, so you really it's automat you're automatically getting a cash out. Whereas you can, I can feel you might get a someone a base price um, cash cow in the next few weeks. It might come up. So that's my thoughts. Is just actually wait for one of those guys. Um, yeah, a couple of other guys people are talking about like um, Bailey Sirinan, for example, at two forty. So he's cheap as well, but like has hardly played any minutes until last week, where he got thirty nine and. And played really well. So that's, yeah, he's not worth it in my opinion. There's every chance he just goes back to scoring 15 to 20. Not worth it. Um, yes, yeah, so that's just generally my thoughts uh, around this week, guys. Think about getting those top those top line guns in and then only those cheaper, sl- slightly cheaper players like a Pierce, um, a Ford Waker. These kind of guys are keepers. You can bring them in at a cut price, but I feel like you don't want to waste your four trades. I'm personally going to bank two. So I've basically just got a free two trades, which is which is great, and I'm really happy with that, which gives me a fair, like a decent amount of balance. So um, with how the team's looking right now, I'm happy with that, and there's no point forcing, you know, I could force Hudson Young into my team this week. I could trade out to Noah Brown for him, and, yeah, he'll score better for the next few weeks, but I feel like the trades are more important right now than bring in someone like that. Uh, that's just my thoughts, guys. Um, I really could just trade drink water to him, which would which would probably be a half decent trade. But I'm deliberating that. Drink water's stinking it up. I could play drink water and uh, and play bring in Hudson Young and play him over Luai or Tanua Brown, but yeah, they're only gonna score a little bit under anyway. So anyway, that's my thoughts guys. Good luck with your trades this week. If you've got any questions put them in the comments and I'll answer them in there. But have a good week guys.